let us all that we can to build a better future. We all know that there's an ongoing crisis uh, in the Ukraine. Here's hoping cooler heads will prevail because, let's face it, I don't want to see mushroom clouds in the sky and then be vaporized a few seconds later. Um, it seems Although like- I would rather be a direct hit than, yeah. like, the fallout yeah. from it. I want to be within the, the mile. I don't want to be in the three to five yeah. mile radius. To quote Dr. Strangelove, the survivors will envy the dead. But Bernie Sanders, from Bernie Sanders to Tulsi Gabbard to Donald Trump, to even good old Bolton, and so many others, are weighing in, and even Congress is weighing in on the Biden administration on how to handle this crisis in the Ukraine. So first and foremost, let's bring up good old, the big disappointment, Bernie Sanders. That's right. That's how I view him as, the big disappointment. So Senator Bernie Sanders, Tuesday... Does appear called the Big D? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know if I'd go there. You said the, big the, disappointment. Nah. <laughs> how about how about how, how about how about the minuscule D? There you go. There you go. Uh, how about so, just the D? No, no. That, that has a very like. No. How about the B? Mm, true. Help us in the chat. You got you come up with something better than that. Yeah, come up with a nickname for Bernie. So, anyways, and not not Bernie or Burn or Feel Burn. Not I like that bullshit. Burnout from Gamer. Burnout. There we go. From the burnout. There we go. So, Senator Bernie Sanders on Tuesday called for the U.S. and its allies to impose heavy sanctions on Russian President Vladimir Putin and other oligarchs in the country as he condemned Moscow's escalating military aggression towards Ukraine. Vladimir Putin's latest invasion of Ukraine is an indefensible violation of international law, regardless of whether false pretext he offers. Uh, there has always been a diplomatic solution to this situation. Tragically, Putin appears intent on rejecting it, to which I would say to Bernie, you know, the sanctions are going to impact the people of Russia, not Putin himself. He is the higher echelon of that society. He's not going to starve. You want to know who's going to starve from sanctions? The women and children. Just like the sanctions we are doing on all these other countries that are again shouldn't be sanctioned. I think it's well, you're barbaric. You're telling me that the people most in power are the most easy to get around sanctions and the people that are mm-hmm. in the least amount of power most likely to get into Isn't that crazy how that happens? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like we see that parallel all over the place. You know all the time. I, you know when I would see that breakdown happen? Sieges in the medieval history. Yeah, exactly. Now, in addition to backing sanctions, Sanders said preparations must be made to accommodate refugees displaced by the conflict and called for investments in a global clean energy transition to fight the climate crisis and disempower author- uh, authoritarian uh, petrostates worldwide. The United States is one of them, Bernie. Sanders' remarks came after U.S. President Joe 3030 in, con- in, con- in concurrent with officials in the United Kingdom and the European Union moved to impose new economic sanctions on Russia following the Kremlin's deployment of troops into the two breakaway territories in eastern Ukraine, which Putin on Monday formally recognized as independent. To prevent Putin's effort to expand his country's presence in the Donbas region from descending into the uh, broader military conflict, peace advocates in the U.S. and abroad continue to urge Biden, the Biden administration to double down on diplomatic efforts. So, who knows if that's really going to be the case with this administration. I know the past three days, Biden was saying that Russia is going to invade, Russia is going to invade. But at this point, I hope that conflict does not happen at all. In fact, this is something we don't need to be part of because, let's face it, there were U- Ukrainian author- uh, figures in the government who were saying, look, you're only, es- you're only causing the problem to be far, far worse. You're only, causing the tr- you're only ca- gonna cause this crisis to grow and escalate. So I wanna pull up this video of former Representative Tulsi Gabbard, and here is her perspective on the Biden-Harris administration. She was on Tucker Carlson. Let's play this video. So I'm just trying to think, because I think it's a fair question as an American, what's in this for me and my neighbors and the rest of us? And all I'm getting is that we can feel morally satisfied because we hate Putin. Is there something that I'm missing? Uh, uh, No, I don't think you're missing anything. The reality is that these sanctions don't work, whether they were put in before or now or later. These sanctions don't work. What we do know is that they will increase suffering and hardship for the American people. And this is the whole problem with the Biden administration. They are so focused on how do we punish Putin that they don't care and are not focused on what is actually in the best interests of the American people. So when Biden stands there and and looks directly into the camera and says, you know, defending freedom will cost us, what he really should be saying is looking directly into the American people's eyes and saying, this will cost you. 
because these sanctions are not going to cost him or Kamala Harris or the power elite in this right. country, even the power elite in Russia. It is the people who will suffer, the, the American people, the Russian people, people here at home working hard every single day facing those drastically increasing prices at the gas pump, facing increasing costs at the supermarket, impacting our supply chain, the hardships that people are dealing with every day now with Biden's sanctions plan, we're only going to see that continuing to get worse. And it doesn't end there, Tucker. This is the problem is you think Russia's not going to respond. You think Putin's not going to respond. He will exactly. respond. And it's likely he'll retaliate using cyber attacks on our financial systems, our communication systems, uh, on our basic infrastructure. Biden will then be forced to respond. Putin will then be forced to respond. So we end up in this endless tit for tat that leads us where? To, to this looming threat and, and likelihood of this thing going nuclear. And again, this is the reality that we all need to understand is true, is that whether it's, it is intentional or unintentional, when you have two great nuclear armed countries at this point of escalation, and then if there is a nuclear attack, the power elite, these people are going to go hide in their bunkers. They'll, they'll have their shelter. They'll have their food and water and ev everything that they need. You and I and the American people, we will be left out to deal with the consequences, to suffer and deal with that destruction and death that will come as a result. And yet we're doing this for principle. The people in charge who don't care at all about our founding documents, who violate their spirit and letter every day, are telling us that an essential American principle is at stake. Do you have any idea what that principle might be? That, that therein lies the hypocrisy. Tucker, is they're saying we are doing this in the defense of freedom, in the defense of democracy, but these are the very same people who are working to undermine our own freedoms and our own democracy right here at home. I have a hard time seeing how they actually say these things with a straight face to the American people when they clearly don't care about these principles right here at home. They don't care about defending them. They don't care about the well-being of the American people. I, I think that's all very clear, and I appreciate your saying it as clearly as you did. Tulsi Gabbard, joining us tonight. Thank you very Thank much. You. Now, look, uh, before we pull up the next video, I just want to say that I know there's a lot of things. A lot of people have been disappointed with Tulsi, especially with her endorsement of Biden. Now she's taking it back. But the statements she said there is stuff that we've covered on it's the like show the before. It's like the thing that we've always talked about with Tulsi. It's like there's, she's a very mixed bag of a right. person. Yeah, and I she, was going to say, yeah. I know how to avoid war. Don't endorse warmongers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like known war hawks like yeah, President right. Biden. But but she, the, go the, go sorry, the thing with Tulsi that still remains true is like, if you want to like look at anyone that it was or is higher up in politics and you go, who doesn't want to go to war? It's crazy that she's always at the top of that list. Like she's yeah. uh, anyways. But the thing is, let's look at a couple things she brought up right now as this Ukrainian crisis is still going on. What's happening here at home? We covered this on yesterday's show and it's becoming more and more uh, of a frontline topic that everyone's talking about inflation here in the united states you've got we need a the, distraction. The, the, the inability of owning a home we have student debt mm -hmm. we have medical debt mm -hmm. people are being evicted from their homes and apartments it's impossible to even make make it by even working three jobs at this point in this country there are no social safety nets and why are we wasting our time and our treasury into this ongoing potential powder keg in the Ukraine. It's because war profiteering and the top 1% want to invest their time and energy into this and not invest into the people. So that was Tulsi's perspective on what's happening here. I mean, and Go they've ahead. been egging this on for years and yeah. years and years. The agreement was that Ukraine would not be a part of NATO. Right. Like, right. yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just really irritated by this entire topic and uh, like spending way too much time like learning and researching about it because it just infuriates me more and more the more that I learn. Right. We have no moral upper hand. We're, we're, we, we, we have, have no just, business being there. We have no business being there. We're, we're just doing like everything the wrong way. Right. And, you know, it's like. I, it, it reminds me, it's like the 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 freaking um, what are those tanks? The peacetime tanks or whatever Putin is sending in? Yeah, like, uh, like the, the peacekeeping the peace troops. Keep. Yeah, like that is so very American of him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, the thing is, the peace. U.S. the U.S. set the precedent <laughs> yeah. for these invasions, uh, for for stuff like this, because we've invaded Afghanistan, we invaded Iraq. 
Yeah. Weapons of mass destruction. Do we not remember? I did two tours in Iraq. There was all this talk of weapons of mass destruction. When I served in 2005, when I, when I, went, uh, when I served from 2004 to 2008, I did two tours. One two, 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 in 2005, the other one in uh, late 2006, early 2007. By that point, everyone realized that there were no WMDs can, to begin with at all. Can you imagine a scenario where a country like Russia might have a really strong alliance with, I don't know, a country, maybe an island even, that's really close to the U.S. and want to move weapons and troops in and out of... I, could you imagine? Could that, could that cause a diplomatic incident if that happened? I don't know. Can yeah. you imagine that happening? <laughs> and, and, and the thing is... I don't think we have to imagine. And, and the thing is, the thing is... This crisis in Ukraine is only going to fuel uh, further division into this midterm election cycle because, let's face it, the GOP is already jumping on top of this like a horny kangaroo out of hell. I know, those are terrible words. <laughs> right there. a horny kangaroo out of hell. <laughs> right, so there <laughs> All right. So so there we go. Uh, <laughs> but the thing is, I want to pull this clip here. It's from CNN. What those were the peace the peacekeeping forces. Yeah, the horny kangaroo. <laughs> uh, terrifying. Uh, uh, that, Australian that, creatures. Yeah. We all should worry. <laughs> that, yeah. So I want to pull up this uh, segment from CNN where you have the GOP and even Donald Trump commenting on what's happening in the crisis. Uh, phase in the show notes. I did uh, leave a minute to where you have to pause there because I don't want to play that full segment. But uh, let's just play this first uh, segment in there. Let's play it. President Biden unveiling the first That's not round of new Cooper. sanctions against no, Russia not. today as he faces pressure both in the U.S. and abroad to punish Anderson Moscow Cooper. for what he Our described man. as the beginning <laughs> of a Russian invasion. Literally. But as the president navigates a major foreign policy challenge, maybe the biggest during his presidency, he's also facing criticism as the nation watches how he handles the conflict, especially from some Republicans who say Biden's former policies emboldened Putin's actions. I don't believe... Vladimir Putin would have God, this bo- a this, this ugly troops on the border turtle. of Ukraine had we not precipitously turtle withdrawn speaking. from Afghanistan last August. It How looked still alive? not only chaotic, but it looked weak. And so yeah, they are pushing. Alive. They have the best the health care that they voted themselves everywhere. to get. And that's what single payer uh, health care does. To the perception of American weakness alive. and loss of resolve. But there is a divide in the Republican Party's view of the conflict. Today, for instance, the former president praised Trump. Vladimir Putin. So Putin <laughs> is now saying it's independent, a large section of I just of laugh Ukraine. every time Trump's on TV. I said, how smart is that? And he's going to go in and be Keeps a peacekeeper. Crying. That's the strongest peace force. We could use that on our southern border. That's the strongest peace force I've ever seen. They were more Doesn't matter what it is. I've Stick ever seen. The They're going to keep points. peace all right. No, but think of it. Here's a guy who's very savvy. I know him very well. Very, very well. Very, <laughs> very now, well. Okay, let's, for the New let's, York let's Times pause it here. Let's pause it here, all right? Because we're going to be moving on to the next segment. But look, uh, obviously, in this midterm, the Democrats are going to be in the fight for their lives. And the Biden-Harris administration is basically dragging all the Democrats, from the House progressives to people like Bernie Sanders, down with them because, again— <laughs> They're ignoring the domestic issues at home. We have no business in the Ukraine. We have no business interfering with that country's politics. And the thing is, if, God forbid, something happens, somebody who wants to be an idiot and push the wrong button at the wrong time, it's the end of human civilization. Or maybe, maybe I'm second being over- term for Biden! Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another one is that, as America always does, Economy's going really bad right now. Let's get everyone focusing oh, somewhere else. Oh, that's yeah. I, I was thinking sort of about like like how war usually gets like yeah. the president the, another term, but that's actually even even a no, better. Well, what this what this is is a a, a a dangerous attempt to do a repeat of Wag the Dog. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if anyone, if none of you never seen that movie, it's an old movie. It's an old movie, but boy, oh boy, is it relevant. To- Days, times, mm-hmm. more so than ever. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, it's not going to be. It, 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 you have these individuals who are part of the GOP, Trump, Turtle Boy, Mitch McConnell, adding their two cents into this crisis. But hold on, let's hear. Let's let, let's maybe 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 I'm being too hard on corporate media because let's bring up our good friend. That's right, a pe- known peacekeeper. Good old Bolton. Remember him? <laughs> He's an advocate for peace. Let's I hear what that this moustache. That's yeah, funny. here. Let's bring this jag off on. Very much. Glad to be here, Ambassador. Let's talk about deterrence. 
How do you deter Vladimir Putin? He seems absolutely determined to do what he is uh, about to do because he's amassed this force. Do you see him backing down? I, I don't at this point. Look, the president announced on Friday that his policy had failed. He said unequivocally the Russian decision to invade Ukraine had been made. That's, that's an admission that deterrence has failed. And yet you can still hear today from your report that they, they count on holding back sanctions to maintain deterrence. If deterrence has failed, the answer is to come up with new steps, certainly to bring the guillotine down on all of the sanctions they've been contemplating and take additional steps if they want to stop any further military action. Their, their admission that they're engaged in gradual escalation of sanctions is a further admission of a, di a disastrous failure of policy. Very much. Glad to be okay. here. Ambassador, let's pause let's it here. Let's talk about deterrence. Because it's going to repeat itself. So that's Mr. Bolton. Now, the thing is, what I found interesting, and I, I have an article from Common Dreams, but first I want to pull up this video from Case Study QB. Check, be sure to support him on Twitter because he's doing a lot of great stuff here. Um, I think it's in the show notes there. Let's go ahead and pull it up. It's a, it's a video uh, right before the Common Dreams. Um, where Congress is now using their leverage to tell the Biden-Harris administration, wait, you cannot go into war without our approval. Now, knowing Congress... While they are doing this, everyone don't hold your breath because of Congress. Congress, again, a lot of these politicians are endorsed and supported by a lot of uh, basically people associated with the military industrial complex. So nonetheless, I find this interesting. Let's play this video in its full entirety has said that he will not put troops on the ground in Ukraine, but Congress appears to be getting a little nervous, and now they are trying to get ahead of anything that might happen. A very unusual group of about 40-plus lawmakers from both sides of the aisle have sent this letter to President Biden urging him to respect Congress's war powers authority. It is signed by everyone from AOC to Congressman Matt Gates. The letter reads this. The American people, through their representatives, in Congress deserve to have a say before U.S. troops are placed in harm's way or the U.S. becomes involved in yet another foreign conflict. Now, Democrat Congresswoman Barbara Lee tells me they wrote this letter for the public to understand the president means what he says about not sending ground troops in. And Speaker Pelosi just told me she supports this effort. Watch. And although it's not a type of uh, Article 5 country, we will not have these on the ground. Know that we are with them, uh, not only in spirit, uh, but materially in terms of meeting their needs and just uh, heralding uh, their message uh, with gratitude for the defense that the people of Ukraine are making for democracy. Now, what does she mean when she's talking about material needs? Well, the administration apparently has told Congress if there is a conflict, there would be a need for humanitarian aid to the tune of $1 billion. Meanwhile, oh, Fox wow. has also confirmed out, huh? Democrats and Republicans we are now crafting a measure that would require congressional authorization if... U.S. forces are pulled into hostilities in Ukraine. Now, Congress has routinely authorized use of American troops overseas. The war in Iraq in 2002, the most well-known in recent history. And even though lawmakers heard, no. were unable to repeal once, two outdate, outdated war authorizations last year, Neil, it would be a stretch for President Biden to try to use those, justify using those for more involvement in Ukraine. So Congress is trying to get ahead of anything that might happen by the way I just okay gotta, first well, time for, uh, yeah, wait, hold on. let me just say this i just want to say for congress getting ahead of anything wow wow guys i guess when it really comes time for you to work you can really get it done but then when the administration says if you're going to do anything you got to shit out a billion dollars for this conflict in the ukraine wow what about the american people no wonder again it's it's no wonder you have so many people who are losing trust and uh no longer believing the biden harris administration because they, they they're not going to take care of us these politicians both democrat and republican it's not that they don't like you it's they don't think about you they don't think about you and they're never going to care about you but i'm i'm i have to say one thing well if i have to take a step back I'm glad that Congress is deciding to take some kind of action. They're like, hey, remember that whole Constitution thing that yeah, we Yeah, that, that Constitution. We should probably follow it this time yeah. around. Yeah, this but, time around. You know what's happening, though? This is, it's because Russia's an actual strong country. 
that's why they're acting this way. If this was another Syria or Libya yeah. situation, yeah, 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 no yeah, one yeah, would yeah, care yeah. because no. we're like, we know we can do this. Like I've been saying, like Russia can effectively do like a couple different things competitively. One of which is field nuclear weapons, uh -huh. field a military, mm -hmm. have a military industrial complex, and uh, a vodka. Right. Well, and oh, and, and wait, wait, and, and killer dance moves. And I feel like and Putin caviar. is also the type yeah, of guy whose bluff you don't necessarily want to call yeah. all that often, yeah. right? What bluff? And, and what bluff? What bluff? Yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, the dude, the dude stole a Super Bowl ring. Yeah, no. And never gave it back. I know. He said, "Can I see it?" And when the guy said, "Who was it? Was it Tom Brady?" I think. It was someone. No, someone it wasn't else. Tom Brady. No. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, no, but but the thing is, like when he asked it back, who like, Who walked off with no. it? So here's here's my question, because I'm, you know, I'm not an expert when it comes to like geopolitical warfare or anything like that. All I know is that um, I don't want war. Mm. I, I never don't think I've ever in my lifetime rooted for any war, actually. Mm. You know, Bernie saying, okay, more sanctions. Tulsi saying no sanctions. That's horrible to the people, but I didn't hear her solution um, in that clip. Um, Bolton says war is what I'm assuming he was getting at. And, and Trump was saying Trump brilliant. has a boner. Yeah, um, <laughs> so what is the... <laughs> what, like, what do you think the solution... I've been, I was reading on some various solutions that other people who are not um, who are not legislators, uh, are, you know, points that they're making about sanctioning the political class, not letting them travel anymore, cutting off their funding, um, just making basically like the political elite suffer. Um, but then they would make our political elite suffer. So uh, yeah, so like, what what do you do in a situation? Do you just Ig ignore until a NATO nation um, gets effed with, or what? Like, how so does that go? Here's the problem that Sorry. we're in. We have it takes a very long time to dig a hole like this to get to this spot to start with. Mm -hmm. So That's I think true. that yes. a huge yeah. amount we have to put in context is if people like I said, if you watch mainstream news, you think this is everything that happens because mainstream news is is, is terrible at communicating anything useful to anyone, but. This is like you you can trace the the, the the parts of this incident all the way back to like the Russian Empire like seven hundred years ago and like traditional borders and claims yes. to Russian heritage. You can go that far back and you'll have your own way of interpreting this. And you also have the whole NATO and their expansion and what should and shouldn't be NATO and agreements that were meant for buffer states, which I was making the point of Cuba earlier. Um, you know, it's imagine like Russia just installed a nuclear base in like Quebec. It's like, you know, we would have a big issue with that. And yet we're doing that with Russia. And then Russia's trying to bump back again. So they're trying to create their own buffer state because they thought they had one and now they think they don't. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, but what do you do at this point? You've already, everything's already wound up. I, I don't know. In, 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 and it's like, it, we're also in an era where, we have like the worst leadership on everything making decisions. And I think that's a, and it's like, that's the biggest problem. If you want to talk about solutions, you have to factor in the political leadership of all the countries involved. If you speak about an abstract of what could be done, how we could deescalate, how we could do this, all of that throws away the fact of who's actually in charge, who's actually running everything and what they're going to do and how they're going to act. America is run by daughterly old men and women who are much more who care much more about their own personal wealth than actually anyone in the Ukraine mm -hmm. um, or these border regions. Russia is literally acting in a weird way defensively. You can even say um, by acting aggressively, by pulling. By the way, a purely perfect American political move. Uh, by, by there isn't a way out of this that's clean because the people, everyone wants more war. And so as long as they keep pushing, especially America keeps pushing, because we're the ones that are really trying to push so that some defense contractor, because we're sending just waves of money and we're, I guess, trying to stimulate the economy through war because we don't know what else to do, because we never know what else to do, because we're an empire and we've forgotten the entire idea of investing internally because it w doesn't help the business community, which is probably why we don't want to do those type of sanctions on Russia, is that this is a business move. Everyone, Americans playing this like a business. A trade deal is going on right now. Mm -hmm. Russia's not happy. It doesn't want to have a trade deal. A lot of Europe isn't happy. They don't want to involve themselves in this trade deal, especially since they're going to be the place that suffers the most from it going wrong. But the dominoes are 
in motion. It's really going to take, like, if, I don't know, if you want a solution, Russia and Europe hash it out, out without America's involvement, which wouldn't happen. Right. No, of course it wouldn't right. happen. Sure. No, I mean, I, I definitely agree with that. I mean, I know that the, 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 the line in the sand right now, essentially, that's being drawn from what I understand is, like, you don't touch any of the NATO uh, countries that are are surrounding uh, uh, Russia right now, but I I don't think it's going to take to that length to actually get us involved, which I think is very very wrong. And I and I don't even know that I necessarily would support a, a NATO attack on Russia if they were to breach any borders. But and I, I mean again, I just want to make it clear to our viewers that. You know, this is not my area of expertise necessarily. All I know is that uh, war is not going to be good for any people, any regular citizens of Russia, Europe, or or American citizens, um, or the world over. Yeah. You know, and, and I didn't even mention the the danger that 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 walks us into. You know, so it's just it's a really sticky situation. And you're right, Daniel. This this rewinds back for centuries. And, um, and, and, um, century after century coming closer to the present day, it's just one wrong step, one misstep mm -hmm. after another. So I, 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 I wish that I was grounded in a solid solution for myself. And I feel like that's kind of where I am when I come onto the show to talk about a topic like this, where I'm just like, Rabble, rabble, rabble. We don't need war. We really, really can't handle it, afford it. We, we, it's it's not going to be good, but what is the solution at this point, at this present day? And I, I, I wish that I had a a, re, a realistic answer for I would, that. I would say at this point, what needs to happen is, um, and this is where I'm going to be idealistic. Everyone on both sides withdraw their military forces. Now that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The military forces on both sides are still going to stay. And I think at this point, you're looking at the United States and NATO. They have broken their promises not to expand eastward. Russia, of course, it's going to defend its borders. And if there's going to be breakaway regions that can be potential buffer states for Putin, he's going to monopolize on it. As Daniel said before, this has been, to get to this point, we have to go back centuries. We have to go mm. back to a lot of key points in history where mistakes were made. And so these mistakes were made, but what is the solution? It's up to us. Now, what do we do? And we have to be as citizens of the planet, all of us, to speak out in one voice and to do whatever we can to put a halt to this mm -hmm. conflict. Now, I don't know what that looks like. But I know that there's somebody like me in Russia. There's probably somebody like me in Ukraine. There's probably somebody like me all over the planet who has their same hopes, fears, dreams, all that stuff. We all live on the same planet. And look, to quote Tara Reid, you know, when she was on our show, she was saying that there's, there's people all over this planet that have the same dreams that we do, same fears, same concerns. And we all share the same planet. And if this conflict gets out of hand, we are not going to recover. We're not going to get back to this point. And humanity will be a footnote in this planet's history. This planet will still continue to go on. Life will survive, but humanity will not. And that should not be our legacy. And we should not let these old dinosaurs, these old politicians, dictate us and lead us to war. Their time has come to an end. The world that they used to live in no longer exists. And we as people, as citizens have to do all that we can to build a better future. And they cannot, the, the politicians, the political elite, can no longer be the ones to dictate that policy. By the way, to another point, based on what you were saying, the people in America that are trying to run this are the people that grew up during the Cold War that are using that methodology, that mentality, to deal with this problem, which it's not the same problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, too, you know, these people who are leading us to war or advocating for war or calling for more sanctions, they're not going to be on the front lines. They don't have the courage to be there. So if they're not going to do it, neither should any of us. We shouldn't let them lead us to war. Enough is enough. Let's try something different. But the only way it can happen is if we work together. I also want to put in this final note, too. Uh, the person who lost his Super Bowl ring was actually the Patriots owner. 
Oh wow! Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. Actually, actually, so Putin took the ring. I kind of like it, that even more. From from <laughs> from uh, from. Uh, let's hold on. Let me get this person's name correct. Uh, Robert Kraft, who is the Patriots owner. So according to now, according to this little segment here, apparently Robert Kraft said he gave Putin the ring. But now, according to a post in the New York uh, from the New York Post. Putin apparently stole it. Yeah. So I, what, what do we? Because like, here's the thing: if I had to interview Putin, I know this this might this might trigger people. But if I interview Putin, I'll be like, "What happened to that Super Bowl ring?" He says he gave it to you me. You would give Putin a platform kit. Yeah, I know. But see, he's such a small known figure that no one knows about. <laughs> no one knows about. How could you give him a platform? Uh, there was actually another point made in the chat that I um that I that I think is an interesting point. I'll put it that way. Um, it's from, um, R O G B R O G B about, uh, uh, Sanders voting for the Ukraine freedom, uh, support act of 2014. Never mind the Nazis. Another thing about the Ukraine, which is really interesting. And it's interesting that we're in a fight over a, a, a country like Ukraine. It's a large contingent of their legislative body is supportive of the Nazi party. And, um, so it's like we're Gee. so we're going to be, you know, at the you know, at the very least, we're going to be giving them all of this money. Oh, yeah. And I and, and I and when I say a large contingent, I'm thinking it's at least it, my memory is not the best. Y'all, I think it's at least a quarter of their legislative body is for, in a party that is supportive of Nazi yeah. regime. Well, so as, as you know, that is also something yeah. to know about but, as well. But, Gee, but, Biden but, Harris, you but, might want to look into this. But it's the important distinction. Nazis like trade more than Soviets do. So it's a okay, choice that's okay. very obvious. Even though the Soviet Union doesn't exist. So as a final note, here's hoping for peace, but maybe shoe on head's right. Maybe we're all going to die, but hopefully we don't have to die in a nuclear vape. Yeah, vape yeah I, I'd like to like, and I'm, I'm fine with acting like we're going to live until we're going to die because no one can call me out on it after. Yeah, so there we go. All right, folks, so. we are going to move